Howdy Commanders, Echo here. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Italian Commanders recently introduced in this update cycle, the Vini Vidivici campaign and update. Currently we've got four of them in the game. We've got the base commander, two cruiser center commanders, and one battleship commander. And we're going to be taking a quick look at their skills, their base traits, and talking a little bit about how they'll work on the Italian ships. So to start off, we're going to take a look at the base commander in the Gocampioni. His base trait, Spartan, reduces damage to your ship in general. As you can tell, this applies to all ship types, all ship classes, not just one specifically. So if you think of Vladimir Trubetskoy, his reduces damage specifically to destroyers. Azure Lane Nelsons, like a rock, reduces specifically to battleships. And as we'll see in a little bit, one of the Italian commanders specifically reduces it for cruisers. So now we've got one for each class specifically, as well as a general one here with Campioni and his Spartan skill. This will top out. It goes up by two-tenths of a percent per level of mastery, meaning that it'll top out at four percent. As a base trait on a base commander, this base trait's in a bit of a hard spot because I think its value is quite high if you're relatively new to the game and your roster is relatively small. You start out with all the base commanders, which will include Campioni here, and when you look at this base trait relative to the rest of the base commander base traits, it's decent when you compare it to, you know, things like Togo Hayachiro's base trait. When you're thinking early game and you're just getting into the game, this is not terribly good, and it doesn't really ever go up in value. You look at things like George Dewey's base trait, Sixth Sense for Torpedo Detectability. Again, not terribly useful in the early game. Doesn't really come and uh, go up in value much as you go throughout the game. But then you start making sort of, you know, weird comparisons to the other base commanders. You know, Jellico, for example, completely useless base trait on ships that don't have heals. It literally does nothing for you. At least Togo and uh, Dewey's base traits do something for you on other boats. If you're in a ship that doesn't have a heal or using Jellico as an inspiration in a ship that doesn't have a heal, it's literally having no impact. So it's, you know, one could say that Campione's is better because it does apply to all ships, but on a ship with a heal, Jellico's is arguably better. You know, assuming the commanders are the same level, of course, we're talking always that the commanders are the same level relative to each other when we're making these comparisons. You know, you look at somebody like Reinhard Schia's. It's pretty decent because one, it affects two things, and two, in the current meta with the fire spam HE, it's a great base trait when you're th thinking kind of mid and high tier battleships that struggle against that HE, but if you're early to the game, it's not that great of a base trait relative to Campioni's. But again, as your roster fills out, as you get into those higher tier battleships, there are quite a few pretty viable builds that slot in a mid to high level shear as part of their fire reduction build and scheme. So again, early game, shear, not terribly useful. Campioni's probably better. Later game, certain build setups, fuller roster, shear starts to go up in value where Campioni is falling in value. Dufournay's base trait is not very good, and regardless of what stage of your game you're in, Campioni's probably better level for level. Battleships almost never want to be shooting HE, cruisers roughly half the time, depending on if it's a HE or AP-centric cruiser, but roughly split down the middle. So his base trait is really only helping like one and a half classes anyway. And then similarly to like Sheer and Jellico, Von Essen's base trait, not terribly useful for a destroyer, for example. Uh, situationally useful for cruisers, but as you get into the, some of the higher tier Americans, some of the higher tier Germans, etc., and definitely most, if not all, battleships, nooks and crannies, potentially a solid option for an inspiration. Whereas you probably wouldn't want to slot in a similarly leveled Campioni on those ships. It would make way more sense to slot in nooks and crannies. So getting back to Campioni himself, 
he his base trade is in that goofy spot because you don't want to dump a bunch of points into a base commander because that's kind of a waste. Once your roster starts to fill out, you want those POs for those other more specific ship class commanders. But his value of a base trait is higher in the early game when you don't have as many POs and you don't have as many commanders to use them on. So he's in a bit of a catch-22 with his base trait. Obviously, far late sort of end game stage when basically everybody on your roster is getting leveled. Sure, you might find a build here and there where you like stack a Spartan with, you know, a Trubetskoy, Azure Lane Nelson, or the other Italian cruiser commander, Cincinnati, who's, who's damage reduction for cruisers. But, you know, at what cost? You're giving up offensive capabilities, you're giving up other capabilities in a survivability guys like you know concealment with bay or makawa or even condo for that matter and you know it's sort of an opportunity cost in that late game sure it's not going to hurt you to reduce the damage to your ship but you're reducing you know effects on concealment you're reducing offensive effects etc so he's just in a tricky spot with this base trait now to have it on the italians built into him pretty decent but for uses like inspiration elsewhere, eh, he's in a tough spot with that Spartan base trait. Now, if we shift over to Campione's whole suite of skills over here, it's the standard offering for base commanders. Nothing different in regards to that. But where his strength starts to shine through a little more, I'd say even above his base trait, is how these skills can apply to the Italian ships we currently have in the game. And because of the nature of the Italian cruisers, he, this makes him a little bit better than your average base commander on those boats. I would say with the exception of Jellico, he's probably one of the stronger base commanders for a certain line that we have in the game at the moment. So we'll kind of go through this one at a time and explain more of what I mean by that. So because of the nature of the Italian cruisers here, slot one, contact is imminent is actually a fairly viable choice because the Italian torpedoes are really, really slow. I think tier for tier, they're some of, if not the slowest torpedoes in the game. Contact is imminent, though more often used on destroyers, is actually a fairly viable choice. And when you consider that you more often than not want to be shooting the Italian cruiser AP. Burn it down is sort of less useful of an option. You're going to probably be a little more AP centric in the Italian cruisers most of the time. So this does kind of shore up a weakness, the torpedo speed uh, of the Italian cruisers. And, you know, you don't really want to buff the HE fire chance anyway. So it's not too much of a trade-off or uh, cost loss there. In slot two, we've got another decent set of choices for the Italian cruisers. We'll start looking at me now. They're already decently well concealed tier for tier. In some tiers, they're almost as well concealed as some of the, you know, Soviet destroyers. And you could, on a really maxed out stealth build, be more concealed than a total non-stealth, like, mortar with Trubetskoy soviet destroyer it's it's actually kind of scary so look at me now just kind of doubling down on that already good stealth fairly decent option crisscross for the italian cruisers also a decent option because they have terrible turret traverse just abysmal makes the pensacola and new orleans look like speed demons in the uh, turret traverse department so a decent choice there as well in slot two campioni on the italian cruisers before it's too late is also not a terrible choice. I think these other two are better, but the Italian cruisers don't have sonar. So increasing the incoming tor de torpedo detectability can't hurt you either. So you're not wasting a choice in any of these in slot two. Slot three, back in stock. Again, we talked about those torpedoes. They are something you do want to try to get in the game as often as possible since they are kind of slow they're more of just like set it and forget it type of torps and they do have a decently quick cooldown 
on their reload cycle. So shortening that up even more, similarly to, you know, look at me now with good concealment, double down on that. Hey, back in stock, already decently fast reloading torps, double down on that. Velocious, uh, also an okay choice because most of the Italian cruisers are decently fast already. So maximizing that, you know, working off a percentage of a higher number, also not a bad choice in slot three. Slot four, beginning at tier four, the Italian cruisers start having smoke screens. So smoke on the water is a decent choice for those mid and upper tier Italian cruisers as well. Steer clear, not a bad choice either, you know, doubling down on the maneuverability. They want to be on the move. They don't start and stop terribly quickly. You know, you're in your smoke screens a lot of the time, so you want to be able to make tight turns, you know, to get out of there quickly if you find yourself getting rushed or whatever. So doubling down on the maneuverability, not a bad choice either. And in terms of legendary slot, you know, you probably want to go fully packed just because the Italian cruisers don't have heels right now. And once you get into that, you know, tier four and above ship, it gives you an extra charge of the smoke screen. So probably always want to be running fully packed on the cruiser line. In terms of using him for the one battleship we are soon to have in the game, the Roma, I mean, I know some people already do have it, but uh, I would strongly caution against doing that. The base commanders in general across all nations are pretty trash in the battleships. Uh, it's definitely the class that they are the weakest in, the base commanders, so not going to talk too much on it there, but he's not a bad base commander for the cruisers, and like I said, aside from maybe Jellico with the British cruisers, uh, he's probably one of the stronger options as a base commander in a line for the various ships in the game at the moment. But enough on Campione, we all know you're here for the other three commanders. So let's first look at the two cruiser commanders, starting with Francesco Mimbelli. Now he's more of what you would consider the sort of defensive commander. I know that's a phrase that most people have been using in the community with survivability traits, etc. It's an interesting fact to note that Wargaming decided to balance these two cruiser commanders by giving the, quote, defensive commander a more offensive trait and vice versa, giving the more offensive commander a defensive trait and we'll take a look at that a little bit more in depth when we look at the other cruiser commander but we're gonna start here with Mimbelli his base trait time to make a move this reduces the reload time of your cruiser main battery on the Italian cruisers this is a great base trait they have incredibly slow reload speeds some of if not the worst tier for tier you know again much like the turret traverse putting to shame ships like Pensacola and New Orleans respectively at tiers five and six just horrible horrible reload you find yourself you know sitting there looking at your watch in between your reload cycles half the time when there are ships in the game that are battleships that are on the low end if you really spec for it pushing their reload speed to be almost as fast as the italian cruiser reload speed we need to maybe question the uh distinctions between these classes and how they're really balanced against each other when an odin can have a reload speed that's only a couple of seconds two three seconds longer than the base reload speed on an italian cruiser what is a battleship what even is a cruiser anymore so mimbelli's base trait time to make a move is a great trait to use on the italian cruisers to help them out with that it's also a pretty decent inspiration. Um, you know, I can see this taking priority over commanders like Scott and Kuznetsov and maybe even Mikawa on certain builds. If you're really trying to maximize DPM and you're not as concerned about range, uh, you know, maybe the ship you're thinking of is already decently accurate. You don't need Scott. Maybe you're not worried about concealment because it's the Soviets and that's a waste of a Mikawa slot inspiration anyway i could see a high level Mimbelli getting slotted in over some of our other kind of top tier choices as inspirations again depending on ship depending on build i don't i wouldn't put it as an always go-to like a scott or a makawa but 
I'd put it in that kind of next tier down, you know, situational, depends on exactly what you're going for for the build and your play style. If you stack this with a refill station, you can really start getting into some decent territory in terms of reducing your reload speed on a cruiser. Getting into the suite of choices for the rest of his skills, in slot 1 we see a fairly standard fare for uh, slot 1 defensive commanders. You know, burn it down, not the best of options because these are a little more AP centric boats on the Italian cruisers, so probably not the best option. Piercer would definitely be an okay option. Um, most of the mid and upper tier Italian cruisers are 203s which are already going to have decent penetration and the velocities from what I'm seeing are at least okay. So piercer might not be completely necessary but if you're finding you're having trouble getting the penetration you need piercer is an okay option. Ingenious however I think is where Mimbelli really shines in slot 1 and that's mostly due to the traverse speed of the cruiser guns. They are glacially slow and that is a hidden component of your DPM. If a target is lit, but your guns aren't traversed to it, you're missing out on damage. So having the turret traverse help from Ingenious is crucial. They, these turret traverse speeds on the Italian cruisers are terrible. Again, putting to shame boats like Pensacola, Miyoko, Alba, New Orleans, etc. Like, if you think those turret traverse speeds are bad, wait till you play the Italians. So. Ingenious is a very enticing option in slot 1 and personally what I would go with if I was playing Mimbelli on one of these boats. Slot 2, full speed ahead, in my opinion the better option above before it's too late. Uh, you know, just doubling down on what's already decent about these Italian cruisers, their speed. So they want to be on the move, they want to be running and gunning as best they can. So full speed ahead is going to help you out with that even more. Now in slot 3, this is where we are presented with his sort of unique skill, I'm Not Insane. And this is an interesting skill. Personally, I don't think it does enough in the right ways to help out the Italian cruiser torpedoes. The speed buff needs to be dramatically more. Adding 2 knots or 4 knots to what is already some of, if not the slowest torpedoes in the game doesn't really help you very much. I mean, the detectability on these torpedoes is already pretty good. So reducing that even further is awesome. Nerfing the range is an interesting balancing choice here. Some of the torps on these boats go up to 12 kilometers. So I would say I'm Not Insane is kind of boat to boat a decent option. You kind of need to look at the torp stats of the boat that you're on and decide whether or not I'm Not Insane is going to work with that set of statistics for the torps of that boat. You know, it might work on one, but not on the other due to the speed, detectability, and range of those torps already. So I'd say it's an okay option ship to ship, but not a, you know, always choose type of skill. And when you're not using I'm Not Insane, I would say Sponge is the better option. Just reducing that incoming damage, making yourself more survivable, being able to use your turrets and your torpedoes uh, with that extra armament, HP, and repair time, always a better option. Or you could really double down, stack Velocious with flanks, or full speed ahead rather, and just make these boats absolute speed demons. Slot 4, we need to talk about slot 4 wargaming. Uh, from a game design standpoint, why does Mimbelli have acoustic chamber? The Italian cruisers don't have sonar. And it's not like choosing acoustic chamber gives you sonar. If that was a component of our game where we chose a skill that grants plus one charges and then that gave us that consumable, I could see this being a viable choice and actually a quite powerful choice given that you could then stack it with fully packed and have two charges to at least protect yourself a little bit during some of your smokescreen deployments. But since that's not a component of our game, there's no reason to have acoustic chamber on my belly. Sure, some premium down the line might have hydro but for right now for the main line why does Mimbelli have acoustic chamber it just doesn't make any sense it's like they copy and pasted you know uh, like a Lutyens or something and then just didn't think oh yeah the Italians don't have hydro maybe we should make like a different skill in slot 4 for Mimbelli 
So it's a bit of a disappointing uh, option because it really isn't an option. Um, and it's not even like it's the base skill. You know, yeah, one can make the argument like the French destroyers. They have smoke on the water. But every destroyer commander has that, so that makes a little more sense. But this is the choice that, you know, changes commander to commander. And to have acoustic chamber here is just very disappointing because it's basically a wasted choice that you really can't pick. So you're left with just steer clear. Sorry guys, you don't have an option in slot four for the tech tree Italian cruisers. Lastly, always go fully packed, especially on the mid and upper tier boats once you start getting smoke screen by the book, even with these new passive proximity effects is still not worth it. Always go fully packed when you're on those boats that have the smoke screens especially. Lastly, I'll just leave you with some closing thoughts on Mimbelli. Personally, I think he brings a lot to the table for the Italian tech tree cruisers. Uh, he definitely helps shore up a lot of their weaknesses. The time to make a move base trait with the reload, ingenious with the turret traverse, situationally boat to boat with I'm not insane, all these things are pretty decent. Obviously not terribly offensively minded. If you're more of a defensive cruiser commander type of playstyle, I'd say he's better for the Italians than some of the other defensive cruiser commanders are across the nations for their cruisers. So. Definitely not a bad option if you pulled him out of your weekly crate this week. Um, you know, he's worth leveling up to at least like four or six, maybe give him seven for an inspiration slot and play around with him on these Italian cruisers. Definitely not a terrible option. Potentially some good uh, use as an inspiration across the rest of your Navy as well. Next, we'll take a look at the more offensively minded Italian cruiser commander, Luigi Cincinnati. First, take a look at his base trait, Aegis. It reduces incoming damage to your cruiser. So we've touched on this a couple of times. And this is, you know, more of a survivability trait applied to a more offensive-minded commander as sort of a balancing factor. I mean, can you imagine putting Mimbelli's base trait on Sansonetti and vice versa? I mean, it would just be a blowout in terms of offensive capability. So it is kind of nice to see a more well-rounded set of commanders for the Italian cruisers uh, and not just doubling down all offensive all defensive and you know these Italian cruisers with the smoke screens you can potentially make some mistakes here and there and accidentally get yourself into situations that may be difficult to get out of and you accidentally take a little bit of damage that you probably shouldn't have so Aegis is not a bad base trait to have in play when you're on the Italian boats in terms of versatility as an inspiration probably not that great. The opportunity cost when looking at the rest of your potential options for cruiser commander inspirations, I don't really think it's there. It falls pretty far down the list. I mean, you know, it's no Makarov, but it's definitely not a Scott Makawa, Kuznetsov, etc. He's not in that type of tier or league either. So, you know, an okay base trade is not wasted when you're running Sansonetti on the Italian cruisers, but probably not something I would level him up for strictly for an inspiration. Looking at the rest of his set of choices here, he's got beyond range in slot one, which is the choice I would encourage you to go with. The Italian cruisers kind of struggle with the range of their main batteries. Now part of this is also because they're so well concealed. So they just have a smaller blue and a smaller white ring. Uh, so beyond range will definitely help you out with that. If you're in a position where you don't want to run beyond range and you want to try to run these as more HE-centric boats, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, but if you are in a position where you want to do that, you could maybe put in a Kuznetsov inspiration to kind of make up for dropping beyond range and uh, preferring burn it down XXL. Though I don't think a 2% fire chance on shells you're going to use less than half the time is worth trading off 10% range. since the Italians already do struggle a bit with their range. Slot 2 is an interesting set of choices. Home run, I mean, as a percentage off of a very high number, some of these Italian cruisers have 12 kilometer torpedo range, so stacking a percentage on top of a already ludicrously high number could be an interesting play. I mean, some maps where you're going to be playing those boats, your opening play, you could torp into the enemy's spawn area. Now granted, it's gonna take 12 of the 15 minutes of the game for those torps to get there, because they do like 52 knots, 
but it's an interesting play. You know, the Italian Torps are definitely a set it and forget it, and then it just kind of catches the enemy by surprise because they're like, what, there are Torps here? From what boat? Type of torpedoes. So it'd be an interesting choice since you're going to want to spam the Torps on cooldown basically whenever you can. It's not a bad option. I would encourage you to probably use Igniter, though, uh, though you're not flipping to the HE shells terribly often. When you do, you want them to do as much fire chance as possible. Again, before it's too late, not a terrible option either, since these uh, Italian cruisers do not have sonar. Before it's too late is potentially a viable option. I'd say more viable than on any other cruiser in the game for sure, but the opportunity cost of picking that over Igniter, I don't really think that's a good choice, and Igniter is probably the way I would go on most, if not all, of the Italian cruisers when running Sansonetti. Slot 3, just like on Monbelli, is where we see Sansonetti's kind of unique trait. And this is called Subtle Manipulations. This is a bit of a goofy trait. Uh, it takes a bit of thought and explanation. So your AP shell damage increases, though it's not as much scaled up as um, Punch Through. You'll see there at Mastery level 3 of 4, rank 14, uh, subtle manipulations is only giving you plus seven percent, whereas punch through at that same level of mastery will be plus eight percent. So it is a little bit less of a bump to your AP shell damage compared to punch through. But this is where this uh, is really kind of a unique skill: is that it reduces the detonation time of your cruiser AP shells, shortening the fuse, making them behave much like the British cruiser AP shells. And I've noticed a dramatic reduction when using this skill in overpens. Even with the 152s, I tried a couple games in some of the low tier Italian cruisers that have 152s. And I was like, oh, I need punch through on these 152s because that's too small of a caliber. Uh, but even on the 152s with punch through, I was getting overpen, 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 overpen. I was like, okay, flip back to subtle manipulations, getting regular pen, regular pen, regular pen. Even on some destroyers that have slightly thicker armor, depending on the angle and such, you're getting penetrating detonations with AP on destroyers. I thought I would just try it out. Yes, flipping the HE is still the better option, but because the reload is so long, sometimes you're in a position where it's just like, I have AP loaded, a DD just popped up, I have to shoot it with AP. Subtle manipulations can help you with that. Now, there is that 5% precision or shell grouping nerf, to the cruiser main battery slot in scott and you're largely making up for that pick fixated in slot four and you've more than compensated for that shell grouping or precision nerf with subtle manipulations overall a very unique skill i know a lot of people were concerned about oh italians are supposed to have semi armor piercing blah 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 this subtle manipulation skill functionally gives the italian cruisers sap obviously it's not a full new shell type it's still regular ap but with this skill selection selected it pretty much mimics the same effect of sap fixated just touched on a little bit i'd say obviously the better choice oversteer clear particularly if you are running subtle manipulations even if you're running punch through in slot three i'd probably still go fixated your reload is so slow that you want to make every shell count. The way you do that is by running fixated. Slot 4 is an interesting choice. I currently have refill station picked because I had him just now out on the tier 3 boat that doesn't have a smoke screen. Once you start getting into those uh, upper tier boats that do have smokes, this is actually a fairly difficult choice to make because you want each volley to come off of reload to cool down as quickly as possible. And since it is a long reload, the refill station percentage gives you more benefit than on a ship that might have a shorter reload. But you've got smoke screens, early, mid, late game smoke screen type of arrangement with uh, three charges of it, usually more beneficial. Hard to say, it depends on your play style and who else you have selected as your inspiration slots, but at least both of these options are potentially viable. So for some closing thoughts on Sansonetti, I'd say he's the better option. As you can tell, I've got him leveled up a little bit more than Mimbelli. Overall, across the Italians, I think he's probably the better choice. 
although Mimbelli does help out quite a bit with what the Italians need help with. Overall, a more aggressive, offensive-centric playstyle is probably going to get you better results, you know, across the average games. Sure, situationally, uh, Cincinnati might not be quite as powerful in certain situations, and you might find yourself lacking here and there in certain uh, tough spots, but overall, I think he's going to help the Italians shine a little bit better than Mimbelli. Lastly, we'll take a look at the Italian battleship commander that we've got in the game. We do only have the one at the moment. As you can tell, I don't even actually own him yet, but we can still talk about his skills. Beginning with his base trait, Time is of the Essence, which, by the way, Wargaming is not capitalized like basically every other skill. Yes, Mimbelli's I'm Not Insane isn't either, but that is more like an actual sentence because it has an exclamation mark at the end. But the fact that the words in Times of the Essence is not capitalized is kind of annoying and a lack of attention to detail that is somewhat irritating. But what it does is more important, and what it does is reduce the reload time of your battleship main battery. This is probably one of the better, if not arguably kind of top tier up there with Joachard and Cunningham type of battleship inspirations and base traits. This is incredibly powerful for two different types of battleships. One, the type of battleship that already has pretty quick reload. Looking at you, Scharnhorst, Odin, Gneisenau, Tirpitz, etc. Battleships that already have fairly quick reloads in that like 20-ish second range that want to double down and make that reload even faster, this is a great way to do it. This just made... Madden, completely irrelevant, because if you want turret traverse, go for Kedrov. If you want reload speed, go for De Revel. There's no reason to ever level a Madden anymore, um, as at least for an inspiration. Sure, to use him on your boats, that's a different story, but to level Madden strictly for inspiration, completely irrelevant nowadays. Go for De Revel if you want the battleship main battery reload. This also helps... The other type of battleship on the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, your Synops and your Vladivostoks and your Arizonas, where, you know, your crew has to get in, like, rowboats and paddle over to shore every time you have to reload and pick up a new set of shells to then load into the main battery. And that's, you know, that 30-plus second. You're talking 32, 3, 4, 5 type of reload. Especially if you're taking modules that punish your reload speed, offsetting that punishment and that nerf with a De Revel inspiration might be a great way to go. And since he's the only Italian battleship commander in the game right now anyway, as soon as we all get Roma, we're going to be putting points into him anyway, so there's no like, oh, do I level the other Italian battleship commander question? Because that isn't a question right now since he's the only one. In terms of his base trait on the Italian battleships, it's also pretty great from what we can see from Roma. That looks like it's going to benefit greatly from a reduced battleship reload time as well. So again, great base trait on the ship itself. And I would assume the rest of the Italian lines as they come out in the future are going to be similar. Greatly benefit from that. I mean, what battleship doesn't want a faster rain battery reload, right? It's always going to help you. And in terms of an inspiration, I'd say he's hanging out there right with, you know, your Joachards and your Cunninghams, etc. Lastly, with Time is of the Essence, I do want to mention that, you know, when he's functionally max level, say like a 16 Legendary 2, that's going to be about 5-ish percent, because it goes up by 3 tenths of a percent per level of mastery. So 5% off of, you know, our kind of bog standard base battleship reload of 30 seconds is one and a half seconds, bringing you down to 28 and a half, roughly. So, a second and a half off of 30 isn't, like, game-breakingly good, but it can be the difference in getting that volley off. You know, you and another battleship are both one-shottable to each other. You're both slugging it out, but your reload is a second and a half faster. You get that shot off before he does. You take him out, you're still alive. So, in terms of that, on De Ravel and potentially on other battleships, it can be the difference between getting out of the fight alive or going to the bottom of the sea. Overall, a great base trait for a battleship commander. Now let's take a look at the rest of his suite of skill choices. 
in slot one. Peculiar to note that uh, he's got not the one for the nuisance wargaming. The Italians fought on the Entente in World War I, but they fought for the Axis in World War II. Why don't the Japanese and German battleship commanders have access to not the one for nuisance, I wonder? Interesting. Interesting. It'd be nice if this was just the bog standard slot one, so that Takagi and Kondo and Celiax and Von Hipper could also choose not the one for nuisance, particularly as it regards AG spam and the ever-increasing presence of massive damage-dealing torpedoes, like from Udachis and from the French destroyers. Just saying, I don't understand why the Japanese and Germans don't have this skill, but it is nice to see it on the Italians, and I'm very happy to see not the one for nuisance as a slot one skill option for D-Revel. Slot 2 option is Brawler, so you can kind of stack Brawler with his base trait, making the reload even better. On the Roma, the base reload is that kind of bog standard 30 seconds, but when you can stack a Brawler with his base trait of Times of the Essence, that can become a pretty gnarly reload speed and can really make you a uh, DPM menace in a battleship. Next we'll move down to Slot 2 where we've got a pretty decent set of choices. We're going to start with this unique skill artisan's touch which increases the battleship's ap shell penetration multiplier so basically the same effect that joajard's base trait has for battleships but it reduces the fuse time of your battleship's ap shells so on the roma since we'll talk specifically about that ship being the only italian battleship that any of us really have any access to at the moment that ship has 381s, which is the exact same caliber main battery as the Vanguard, and just one millimeter larger than Bismarck and Richelieu. So, this will increase the penetration capabilities of the Roma's main battery. So if you think of you know ships like Vanguard, Bismarck, Richelieu, if you're concerned about your penetration capabilities with those ships, you may be in a similar situation with Roma. So by taking Artisan's Touch, you're going to make your ability to penetrate battleships a little greater. However, that fuse reduction may ultimately make it more difficult to actually citadel the battleship. So it's going to make the shells of the Roma perform very similar to sort of a Vanguard with a Joajard influence. You know, where you've got that decent penetration capability based on like the caliber plus the Joachard, but then that uh, British AP shell fuse, that short fuse. So if you like a performance from a Vanguard with a Joachard inspiration, this Artisan's Touch will functionally give you that same set of uh, performance characteristics just in a slot two skill instead, freeing up an inspiration slot for something else. Now, if you're worried about being able to strictly citadel things, this might not be the greatest thing to pick. Um, you know, it's difficult to say how this is going to affect the performance on cruisers when you're shooting the AP from the Roma at cruisers. But I will say that, you know, since the Roma's base AP shell damage is 12,000, missing out on citadels might be a tricky thing. This is definitely going to have to be a skill that you slot in, play around with, try shooting at specific ships and noting, okay, I got citadels on that one, didn't get citadels on that one, etc. But you don't have a terrible other choice in slot two with crisscross. This is another good option. The base turret traverse of the Roma's turrets is already 30 seconds. Some of the best in the game for a battleship. And since crisscross works as a, a flat degrees per second and not a percentage, like many other skills in the game, this is a great skill on uh, turrets that already traverse quickly. Stack this with a Kedrov and you're whipping your guns around like you're a, you know, sort of medium uh, cruiser range type of turret traverse speeds. It's going to be kind of blitz around and shoot over here, flip the guns, shoot over here, shoot the guns over here again, flip them back type of gameplay with the Roma if you stack a crisscross with a Kedrov. Slot 3, Firefighter, obviously. Slot 4, Master Mechanic, 
obviously, especially uh, once you get the Ravel up to uh, base rank 16 and you get plus two charges of repair party, that's obviously the way to go. And in legendary slot, will to rebuild because running with scissors, you, you don't generally want that skill. So will to rebuild is definitely the way to go. For some closing thoughts on Dil Ravel, I think he's going to be a pretty decent battleship commander as far as they go. His suite of choices for his main skills as well as his base trait I think are going to lend themselves really well to making the Roma a fun ship to play and a really effective and powerful ship. Playing around with Artisan's Touch, seeing what that can do for you, especially when you you know play around with who you're also slotting in for inspirations as well as Artisan's Touch, can really make... Uh, De Ravel, a very dynamic commander, and can really make the Italian battleships shine. Well, commanders, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope I gave you some insight into the Italian commanders and what you should be thinking about when you're building them and using them on the various Italian boats that we've currently got in the game and as they come out more in the future. Let me know in the comments below who you've got so far, how you're leveling them, and which skills you're choosing for the Italians. Are you liking these commanders? Are you thinking about using some of them as inspirations across the rest of your navy? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks an awful lot for listening. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, stay salty, commanders.